So this is the City of Twinsburg Architectural Review Board on December 1st, 2022. It is 6.03 p.m. Uh, we'll start with the roll call of all members. Mrs. Fraser? Here. Mr. Gillen? Here. Mr. Midlick? Here. Is there anyone here tonight that would like to speak um, that does not have a case? Um, someone's coming in. Do you have a case on the agenda tonight? I do. Okay. We're going to take the first case then, which is the Dollar Tree case, case 22-1162 at 8900 Aurora. Good evening, how are y'all doing? Uh, I don't know, did you get a copy of our the drawings that we're proposing the variance for in our submission packet? Uh, is it the same list? Yeah. But it's an extra list. I ran those before I left. Okay. Good morning. So, Mr. Gillen, you have the first case on the agenda tonight. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, this Dollar Tree site that we're proposing in the shopping center right up here, I can't pronounce the name of it. That's what it's Oh, uh, different name. Uh, Kashamara. Kashamara. Yeah, that's, that's the one. Not, that's that's not you. Going. That's a small building. Um, oh, so that's a small building. You guys are out a lot. Kind of okay, so that's the same. That's your Twinsburg Town Center. So yeah. that I can do all day long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so we are proposing, we'd like to try and do and add additional signage on the, the main elevation of the building as we see it for safety reasons coming in. When you're coming up, the arrow road from the interstate, it's it's next to impossible to see where the Dollar Tree is going to be in the shopping center. There's trees, there's existing buildings until you get right up on it. Um, and so we'd like to, to increase our, our footprint and add these signs here on the, it would be the, the larger elevation, which is the main entrance, as well as the tower, which would be the little bit that you can see here on the, the south side. But this, this here is what you Yes, sir. sure but I, I do think that that was mentioned because I know it's been brought up before to fit inside the raceway right on this building I know even recently I'm not positive it was Dollar Tree but I know recently we've talked about that and this is another case where on the image that we received it looks like you're overlapping by about I don't know an inch and a half top and bottom 
And that could be just an issue with scale. That's what I was wondering. So, because I noticed it with the um, the pet center, in the shopping center where they exceed where the aluminum is for the raceway mount. So that could be a scale issue, and we'll note it that it needs to fall within right. within the cladding that's there. Okay. And Panera also has one of these towers next to this. Yes, ma'am. Do they have signage on that tower? They do. They have their logo. Right. Okay. So I don't think that this is, I think it's a nice small sign. I like that it doesn't have a lot of words on it, on the tower. It's just a symbol. So. I think it makes sense. That would make sense. I'm trying to accomplish that. Mm -hmm. Right. And if it's going to be the same as the one on, on the other side, it balances out. I'll move on it to approve it as submitted. Um, can we make it as noting? Yeah. And as the note being that it fits within the area. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought about it, but I thought that they would <laughs> naturally do it anyways. Yeah. I'll second it. Noted as fits within the cladding area? Yeah. Yes. All right. Mr. Midley? Yes. Mr. Gillen? Yes. Mrs. Fraser? Yes. Hey, Jennifer. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. And then here, come on, just in case you have any questions about anything with your what's going on just feel free to me call you guys can be open in time for christmas i don't know about christmas <laughs> <laughs> let's shoot for like easter <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just can't. Can't. Yeah. Yeah. i'll i'll take care of it thank you so much have a good night thank you. Thank you as well Yeah, well, a lot of it, so 
one of the issues that we have is the ceramic guys, they want to get our hard surface vinyl plank flooring in the same house. But we already have the best vinyl plank flooring installer in Northeast Ohio doing that. So for them, there's not enough heat on the building just to come do the tile work. They want the tile and a vinyl plank. Now, unfortunately, we kind of have to deal with the fire installer. So, yeah. Uh, so I was yeah. trying to get me to do backsplashes. <laughs> you know Frank? Yeah. Yeah. He just wanted to start doing backsplashes. I, I saw him two days ago. Yeah. Uh, you think it's good until after a while you realize you're underneath there the whole time. Oh, uh, yeah. Rotten and it just... I only do it for every once in a while, just when I can't wait. There's decent money in it. I mean, yeah. you can slam them out. But yeah, it's not... It's, it's just as labor intensive as being on the floor side and top. Yeah. My hands are still soft, but I do that. Forget it. <laughs> Those guys got the roughest you hands. Great, great leaves. Yeah, sure. I'm sorry. All right. One more shot. Okay. So, uh, my name is Bill Markowski. Um, Bill in the house at 1682 Bridget Lane in Twinsburg for Neil and Donna Butler by Coco and Summers. It's a single family home, vinyl side, <coughs> uh, side would be nightfall, pro, by Provia. Exterior trim is white, and the roof will be pewter color by certain teeth. And the stone selection is the Bottle Breakwater Rough Ledge Stone, as drawn on point. So you have stone on that. Front garage gate is all the way up. Front stone on the um, front wall on the left there, all the way up. Chair height between those two, and then great stone all the way around. Stone looks nice. You see it turns on the sides. Yep, yep. Um, you got two two foot return on the sides, full height. See, we have windows on all sides. Um, on the right side, there are two kind of oddly sized space windows, um, but they are where the garage, we're just beyond the garage, so the wall recesses back, so I don't think that those will really be noticed. Yeah, the one, this window the here is right near the jog. It's in the, that's in the master commode room. Right. That dimension may not be exactly the scale. Usually that window is... It looks like high. Like 30, like 30, high. Usually that window is 32, 36, and I don't think that that's like that. Okay. Well, whatever size that ends up being, those two windows, however they need to be placed based on the interior. There's also the AC unit is right outside those. I think that's an area that's kind of going to be screened. I would imagine with, yeah, with, with, with that, the garage, with that, with, yeah, with that. With the, yeah, the garage bumping out there with the AC unit. I think that's going to end up being a screened area. Anyway, so those windows, they're going to kind of disappear, but um, but there's a door on that side of the garage. The other side, it only has one. Sorry, one small window on a 41 foot long. Wall. I believe that window. It's in the bathroom. That window should also be a 32 by 36 single home. That's what it has. Sorry about that. I, my drawing shows the transom. Okay, I see a 32 by 36. It looks like a double hung on my image, but maybe it's a single home. It's in a bathroom. You think you on the left elevation? Um, yes, left elevation between bedrooms two and three. Okay. So we have one, it's a very long elevation just for one small window. I would recommend adding a window in bedroom three in front of the closet. That's in can, the I add a tra can I add a transom to bedroom three instead of an operable window? Like a 60 inch wide transom. Oh, like centered on the wall? Yeah, up high, centered in the bedroom 
three. Um, I'd be okay with it. The only reason why is because sometimes it gets a little crowded with a single hung window. Um, you end up with like a nightstand directly in front of the window or whatever. You know, you put that in there. Yeah. Like that. Right. It's kind of not one of my favorite things to see. And I, those transoms are really popular. You know, I deal with my customers. Yeah. Okay. Daylight and it keeps privacy and mm -hmm. yeah, and actually, that yeah, if you, it lines up that bedwall too. That's how much it lightweights. So, you're saying in the bedroom three, you want to add a 16 wide transom? Yeah, we'll add a transom toy in the front of that, yeah, or it's centered in the room, however, that looks out. But it, it, in front of that massing is what I was trying to say. And then on the back, we have steps to grade if needed, but because you have the the basement windows exposed, those gardening style windows, and assuming that you're going to need steps to grade, so then you want a landing at the top of those? Yes, we'll have a landing, okay. um, full width of the side glass door, and then probably the stairs would be the same width as the landing. Sounds good. So we'll just need to add that landing. It said on the drawing, provide steps to the patio as necessary. Yes. So I think it's you know that lot kind of drops off a little bit, so maybe right. a kind of a daylight situation like our new model at seventeen hundred. Yeah. I like that. So. I think it's nice. It'll bring a lot of light to that basement because that's a large basement under a ranch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You'll end up with a, like a four thousand square foot basement. <laughs> so it's pretty big. Right. The double the size of the house. Right. So that's all about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Else? This is the second. That's the last lot that's open there, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, I think there. This is the, the houses. The houses are kind of close together. You might see a lot of them for the street anyway. So. Right, just that front portion. Yeah. I'll move to approve it as noted. Noting the window in the bedroom and the landing of the steps. I have a uh, left elevation at a transom centered on bedroom three, 60 inches, landing and stairs to from head to your door. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I'll second it. Mr. Midlick? Yes. Mr. Gillen? Yes. Mrs. Fraser? Yes. Hey, I'm good. Thank you. All right. You guys aren't super busy, huh? No, it's been slow the last two months. Yeah. Let's redesign, build, build the whole house ready. 
we, we, I used to always say, so we used to do remodels and a lot of times the customers would, you know, we did a lot of kitchen bump outs and kitchen remodels. And the customers yeah. like live in the basement. With, yeah. Like, a hot plate, they have children, <laughs> they have children, plate, yeah. and I always used to be cracking up for the first three weeks, there'd be donuts or cookies or coffee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, set up for you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. After the first three weeks, it's like they, they open the door, they're like, <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. I've been on this know. for months. Because yeah. I, I can't, you know, I have steady customers. Sometimes I have to pull off that, pull them from the beginning. Although I'm, I'm, I have a good relationship with them, the seventeen hundred yeah, square foot. You know, you just um, gotta maintain their expectation. Yeah, you know? like we've done some remodels in the past, and we tell the customers that yeah, look, our guys aren't the cleanest guys. You know, if you want your house to be cleaned every day, you know, yeah. we're gonna have to you know hire somebody on to just sit there and clean up. Otherwise, yeah. we can do it, but it's not gonna be very clean. Yeah. Remodeling is messy. Yeah. Thanks. Okie dokie. Yeah. Yep. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. You as well. Okay. Next, we have the approval of the minutes from November 17th. Um, those were sent in our packets. Mm -hmm. And we had on these um, that we were waiting to find out if the law director approved the procedure of approving a, a case without the applicant present? Correct. I was told by the building commissioner and the clerk that that was approved as, as long as they were okay with your guys' decision and the contractor was okay with adding and they actually submitted. I can forward you over the email with the numbers being on the sign. Okay. Yeah. But it met the four inch by half inch white on the blue sign. The corner said it was okay. They don't, they don't object to not being here get their approval with their phone. So questions I about this procedure, just, I'm just wondering, if we have another case come through and they're on the agenda and they're not here and we decide to review the case and let's say make some small changes and then send it through with approval, does that stand or do we, or can they come back and say? So, they, so okay, so <coughs> that's where we're at today. Right. So if the guy that you give the approval to that didn't show up to your meeting mm -hmm. wants to not do it the way that you approved it, fine. We throw it out, they pay a new fee to show up, and we go, because they were on an agenda for that time, if they want to come back and do it again, they're orders, they can do that. Okay. But what if we had not approved it, then they can just come through at the next meeting? Or they'd have to get scheduled with the Yeah, they would. Yeah, I don't know if they would make, say maybe yeah, not meet the next meeting, but yeah. they would come back. Yeah, they would just restart the process again. It's like if they make a change to something that was approved, they have to come back. Right. And if you guys don't approve something, right. they always have the option of coming back. Yeah, if they don't like uh, a change we made, then they can come back or not come back. So. Okay. Yeah. But they don't have to appeal to council because we, cause sometimes that happens if we decide to not approve something, then their next step is to appeal to council. If they not, weren't not, here not and we decided, case, case, in the case where they, if they weren't here and we decided to not approve it, then they they're would not, If they're not here and, we, and you approve with conditions and they don't like the conditions or the approval, then they can come back. Okay. If they were okay with what they were going to get anyway, whether they were staying here or not, mm -hmm. then we just move on. And yeah. And, and because it's being administered out of the building department, the lawyer said it was okay. Nothing really changes other than they weren't here in the meeting. Their, their drawing's the same. They're going to put the, the numbers on it. Like, again, it's a rare opportunity. It's rare. Right. But, uh, that's, how, that's how we would do it. We still are like encouraging and not telling people right, if they don't have the option of not coming. It can yeah, be right. advantageous to not come because then you get two of these by this board. There's no, there's not, <laughs> there's no advertising. Usually, you right. Come. People are usually calling every single day wanting to know if they're approved yet. They do not like to postpone it to the next meeting. Right, so that's, they don't want to postpone yeah, it. Yeah, no one wants to wait. It would be a very rare case, I believe, if that happened, that someone was doing it to get free architectural review. So, so you approve yeah. it and you, you tell them they have to put the stand in Spanish, just to disappear. Right. They say, no, we don't want to sign in Spanish. Fine, come back and do your thing. Okay. You, know, you can't go to council without getting this process done. So. I don't recall ever having uh, the, 
demolition, I think maybe come, has come to us. But I don't recall ever having, I mean, there all the time, I don't remember having anybody from the ARP come to council to get overturned. BZA, yes. Planning Commission, yes. Not ARP. Okay. I mean, have you had one since you've been here? I, no, not that I'm aware of now. No, we don't even have to approve ARB. Sometimes we have to approve uh, site plan, our final site plans for uh, planning. And, okay. and occasionally there'll be somebody that wants us to override a, a zoning appeal, and it takes five votes to override the board. Okay. I don't think we've overridden the board in a while. Not, that, not since I've been here, I remember. I, mean, I, know, I know what the rules are. I've done it in a while. Okay. Sheets was one that we did the first time. Mm. There, there was issues with it. They got stalled, and that was a that was council saying we want to look at this again. But, okay, so we're not creating some weird loophole or okay. we're, we're swimming easy. That's good. The law director's in charge of that. I mean, I just wanted to know how that turned out. Okay. Okay. So the minutes look fine. I would make a motion to approve the minutes. Seconded. Okay. Second. Mrs. Fraser? Yes. Mr. Midlick? Yes. Mr. Gillen? Yes. Um, we have two members absent tonight, um, both Baraj and David. Motion. We have the motion to excuse them from the meeting. We were still able to run because each individually or you can do them together in case somebody wants to start voting no on it. And you gotta split it whoever you want. But if, if, if there's nobody that has significant issues with excusing them, and the only reason that you wouldn't excuse them if there were other issues and you can have three meetings in a row to get your that's that's so you like this so if you give them excuse, you can make a motion to put two on the same and just pass it. I'll make a motion to excuse both members. Can I get a second? Yeah, I'll second it. Mr. Gillen? Yes. Mr. Midlick? Yes. Mrs. Fraser? Yes. Okay. And there's plenty of work on the right wall. I think there's cases and they have good, they want to attach this where they need it. A lot of them. There's nothing else. I'll make a motion to adjourn. If I can get a second. I'll send in that. Mr. Gillen? Yes. Mrs. Fraser? Yes. Mr. Midley? Yes. That is 631.